hoping to um, reach now in Babylonia. All right. Now let's move on. Um, Babylonia is a civilization that developed in Mesopotamia around 1800 BCE, succeeding the Sumerian civilization, which had collapsed by then. Um, the Babylonians used the cuneiform system, okay, of writing on clay tablets with reed styluses, in which also the the numerical um, system that they are using is making use of this cuneiform system with with the reed styluses. Um, the Babylonian interests, um, we'll talk about this now. The Babylonians had a complex and prosperous culture and pursued many interests. Because of the durability of the cuneiform tablets, much is known about their civilization. The writing system is intact, okay, in which um, history, um, they, can, they can write about their, their, their interests, they can write about their, their civilization, they can write about how they do their daily lives because of this this um, written form of cuneiform tablets. Um, some of the earliest and reasonably uh, re reliable records of the positions of the stars and planets were made by the Babylonians, that is by their astronomy, who developed a complex system for recording them, Okay, making use again of the system that they had. Um, throughout the Mesopotamian, Mesopotamian civilization, from Sumer to Babylonia, a unique number system was, was used based on the number 60. Okay, it's not unlike the the Egyptians that used the base ten that is decimal. They used the base sixty, not on the familiar base ten used in many other cultures. This base sixty, if base ten is decimal, base sixty is what we call sexagesimal. All right. So in the sexagesimal system, that is sixty base system, there are different combinations of characters for each numbers, for each number from one to fifty nine. Then the symbol for one is used again. By the time, by the time, um, the one is used again, um, it's now, uh, it means sixty. The symbol for two also means one twenty. The symbol for three also means one eighty, and etc. So that is, there is a place value system. Okay, compared to the Egyptians, who had the totally separate symbols for two twenty, two hundred, and two thousand, etc., the Mesopotamian slash Babylonian system used the same symbols over the next higher level, which we also use in the decimal system or the Hindu Arabic system that we're using right now. Okay, note that we do the same, okay, but we place zeros behind them to indicate the level. So, using the marsh reeds as styluses, Mesopotamian writing was done on wet clay tablets by pushing the end of a reed stalk, that's the reed stylus, into the clay and then letting it dry, and then we have, they have that uh, uniform tablet there. They only make use of two characters, okay, though there are 59 separate symbols for the numerals in the sexagesimal system, the Babylonian numbers are all written only with two characters, okay, two different characters put together in different combinations. Unlike us in Hindu Arabic, we're now using 10 characters from 0 to 9. The first character is the vertical, which stands for 1. If the reed is turned up with a thick end up, and uh, if the reed is turned with the thick end up, rather, and the, and the pointed end down, it is a symbol for 1. For instance, we have these numbers, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, since there are 5 reeds, 6, 7 again, 8, and 9. Notice that, 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 that the, 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 the arrowhead somehow, or the line, goes down. And then when, 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 when they have 3 adjacent um, triangular figures here, they put the other one, 4, the 4th one, below. And it, it compasses the whole um, lines here in the 3, for, for instance. Looks like it looks like this, right? Um, in the five, it encompasses two, and then on the six, it becomes um, side by side with the others, and then likewise with the seven and eight, and then until it will become nine. And what will happen if it will become ten? We go then to the next character, which is when the reed is turned with a thick end to the right and the pointed end to the left. This is a symbol for ten. That is, for counting by tens, we have ten, twenty, thirty. 40 and 50. Uh, we don't have a we don't have a 60 because this is sexagesimal, right? So uh, when we when we reach 60, we go back to the to the one symbol. So how do you write this from 1 to 59? This is how we write it in Babylonian. 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10. And then if we want 11, we'll put the 10 there and then with a 1 to 1 10 plus 1 is 11. 10 plus 2 is 12. 10 plus 3 is 13. 10 plus for 4 is 14, and then so on. And then when we have 19, 10 plus 9, and then we want to put it back to 20, 
what we'll have is two sideway um, character. And then we'll have 21, 22, 23, and so on. I think you can have, you can imagine that right now. You can, you can um, visualize. So for instance, we want the number uh, 48. So here's 48. We have four um, sideway characters and then eight downward characters. So that's 48. We have, let's say, 55. So we have five um, sideway characters and five downward characters. And that's it, um, the vertical and horizontal characters, rather. Uh, what if, what comes after 59, then? What comes after 59 will be the same as, the same symbol with 1, only that it has a place value system. So 60 is the sexagesimal number system. Uh, in the sexagesimal system, is the basic unit at the next place value. So it looks like just 1, like I said. So that is 60 is equal to 1 times 60. How do we write that? Um, let's take a look at this. Um, multiplication table of 9. So 9 times 1 is 9. 9 times 2 is 18, 1 and 8. 9 times 3 is 27. All right, so 2 plus 7. 9 times 4 is 36, so 3 and 6 here. 9 times 5, okay, is 45. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, so that's uh, 40. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 45. Um, 9 times 6 is 54. Now 9 times 7, Take a look at this. 9 times 7 is 63. We know that. But there's a 1 here indicating that this is 60, not 1. And then there's a, a little bit of space, and then there's a 3. Okay, which means that we have 60 and then 3. 60 and then 3. And we have um, 9 times 8. 9 times 8 is 72. So 60, all right, plus 10. That's 70 plus 2. So 60 plus 10 plus 2 is 70. Um, 9 times uh, 9 is 81. So we have 60, 1 here, and then 20, and then 1. So we have 60 plus 20 plus 1 is 81. Um, 90 times 10 is 60 plus 30. So that's 90. 90 times, or rather, sorry, 9. 9 times 11 is 99. 60 plus 30 plus 9. So 60 plus 30 is 9, 90. 90 plus 9 is 99. 9 times 12 is going to give us 60, okay, plus 40. 60 plus 40 is going to give us 100. 100 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's going to be 108. 9 times 13 is 60 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 60 plus 50 is going to give us um, 110. 110 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So meaning it's going to be 107. Um, or 117 rather. 60 plus 50 is 110. So 117. Okay. And then um, we'll have this 9 times um, 14. So that's two 60s now. So this is going to become 120. 120 and then we have 6 so 126 so that's how we read the the symbols for babylonians okay it just needs some practice in order for us to understand that and notice the, there should be some space between the 60s and then the units units digits so why would we choose a base 60 why would the babylonians or the mesopotamians use base 60 because most culture have a number system based on 10 um or perhaps five uh relating, relating to the digits of our hands um but um sorry um why did they use base 60 um they say that 10 is a poor choice because dividing 10 um into even parts is kind of kind of limited it's only divisible by 1 2 and 5 other numbers are not divisible with 10 but for the factors of 60 for 60 it has a lot of factors so the number 60 can be evenly divided by many smaller numbers that is these are the 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 factors of of 60 so the fractional parts are much more easier to express exactly express exactly so um, any unit can be divided into parts of a lower place value lower place value by dividing it by 60 for instance when we say when for instance when we say one minute it's 60 seconds but when you say a half of a minute that's 30 seconds when we say a fourth of a minute that's 15 seconds and so on so seconds is the next lower division of time 
um, after minutes. Okay, so we can also have hours as the next after the minutes. So the sexagesimal system today, okay, we still use it um, in two places, keeping time in hours, minutes, and seconds. And also measuring angles in degrees. After degrees, we have minutes, right? And after minutes, we have seconds. So we still use it um, today, up until today. Now, the question is why, okay? Why are they using the sexagesimal um, system? Timekeeping and detailed astronomical observation came from the Babylonians, okay? Greek science made use of Babylonian data and kept their number system for the purpose, okay? Because, well, it's the one which is being used, so why not just copy and, um, and continue to use that kind of system, okay? And then here, we have now the place value with the placeholder. In our decimal base system, we use the same numerals over and over again to mean the numbers of different sizes. But we can tell which size is using the use of zero and decimal places. So, for instance, when we have 27,900, it is bigger than 279 because we have two zeros um, in lieu or in put here to make the, the magnitude of the number bigger. Or... That's for the zeros, use of zeros. And decimal places, let's say, for example, 98.6 is smaller than 986. That's making use of the decimal places. So we can tell which is bigger in size and magnitude. So the place value here um, in the Babylonians is, is there. There's the place value, but there's no place value holder. Compared to us, we have the decimal points. In the Mesopotamian Babylonian system, numbers that are 60 times larger or 60 times smaller are all written the same way. So the number 85, as we write it, is 1 times 60, that is 6, this is 60 here, plus 20, that's, and then 5, so 60 plus 20 plus 5 is going to give us 85. The number as we write it as, um, the number that we write as 1 and 512 is still written the same, okay? This is 1. Okay, this is 1, this is 20, this is 5. So that's why it becomes 25 over 60 since it's, that, it's sexagesimal. So we put the decimal as, uh, as over 60 or the denominator over 60. So hence, we have 1 plus 25 over 60. That is, um, simplify that, um, that will become 1 and 5 over 12, which also appears the same way, which is kind of confusing, of course. Okay, so it is ambiguous in principle but rarely used in practice because of the orders of magnitude are separated by factors of 60 there was rarely confusion in the early centuries but ultimately this was a severe drawback in the system as society became more complex complex okay so that's the end of our babylonian um culture and babylonian number system that we that we uh discuss, that we have just discussed Okay, and we're going to just see a little bit of the Mayan numbers. So you, these are the Mayan numbers here. Okay, so this uh, happened between um, 300 to 900 AD. Um, there is a place value system. This is base 20 for the Mayans. And the Mayans are the one that introduced the number zero. Okay, so the Mayans are the one who introduced the number zero. So... The Mayans are found here in the in the Gulf of Mexico, somewhere in Mexico in South America. And we have this Mayan codices in which they make use of the, their Mayan numerals. So we have the 9 here, the 18, the 2, the 2, and the other symbols over there, which can be seen in their codices. Okay, so let's have some timeline of the history of, of ancient early number systems. So we have the Egyptian numerals, the first are the Egypts and Egyptians and then the Babylonians are there um, by Iran or Iraq today. We have the Greek ciphered numerals. We have the around 100 BC to 500 AD we made use of the Roman um, Roman numerals. Um, then the Mayan in Central America is also being used. Um, the Hindu numerals are now being developed in 500 AD. In 800 AD Arabs adopt Hindu numerals okay and around 500 to 1100 um, AD Dark Ages are in Europe, and in 1202, Fibonacci um, reaches reached the the Indians, okay, or or the the 
the near provinces of India, and then he discovered the easy writing system, which is the Hindu Arabic system. Okay, that's why it's called Hindu Arabic because the Arabs adopt the Hindu humor, so that's why it's Hindu Arabic. And Fibonacci, you know, um, Leonardo of Pisa, saw that it's more efficient than the Roman numerals that was being used in 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 the whole of Europe. Um, that days so he produced this liber abac abacai this is a book by fibonacci or leonardo of pisa um to introduce to the western world the hindu arabic numerals and then you know it took them um more or like more or less a century for the western world for london to use the the hindu arabic and to tell to tell themselves that this is more easier this is much easier than the roman numerals so that, thanks to Fibonacci, we're, we're looking at these kinds of numbers today okay so our major takeaway will be um, maybe you will have some questions in mind which numeration system do you think works best what do you think and why try to try to th um, think about that and answer that do you think our numeration system will continue to evolve Okay, so um, let me hear out your thoughts in the comments section below and let me um, see your, your, your thoughts about that and try to type it out there, down below in the comment sections. And this is the end of our part two of the History of Mathematics 1. And this is the foundations, again, of and history of mathematics. Um, thank you so much for being with me here. And um, there will be more um, after this video and we'll be, we'll be producing um, more videos about this history of math so thank you very much for watching i hope that you would like to subscribe and please hit and do hit the like button or do hit the subscribe button okay so thank you very much and see you soon